Hello and welcome to episode 27 of the Wool Needles Hands Knitting Podcast. My name is Taylor and I will be your host for this podcast, mainly about knitting, sometimes about crochet, and we do get up to hand dyeing yarn from time to time and other fiber related topics. I'm coming to you from Henderson, Nevada, which is a small suburb outside of Las Vegas, Nevada. This is where I live with my husband, Brandon, our three and a half year old son, Angus, our three month old son, Ronan, and our big, fat, chubby, hairy house cat, Oscar. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back time and time again to check out the podcast and all of the other offerings here at the Wool Needles Hands Fiber Journey YouTube channel. If you are a new viewer and subscriber, thank you so much for coming to check and see what we have going on over here in this little corner of YouTube. If at any moment you really like what you see here, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up. It helps the video and the channel to grow. It really means a lot to me. I appreciate it so very much. And also don't forget to subscribe so that way anything new that gets uploaded to the channel, which happens happens weekly, you will be notified of that and you can watch things as they are uploaded here. I upload new content every week and a new podcast episode every two weeks around midweek. I shoot for Wednesday, sometimes it's Thursday, sometimes it's Tuesday, but you will be able to find a new episode of the Wool Needles Hands podcast every two weeks here on the YouTube channel. If you have any questions pertaining to the podcast or the YouTube channel, you can contact me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. We also have a Ravelry group connected to the podcast. Head over to Ravelry, go to the groups tab, type in Wool Needles Hands or Wool Needles Hands a Knitting Podcast, and you're sure to find us over there. It is a growing community, lots of fun things to chat about over there, and we do have a year-long knit-along going on right now, which is a lot of fun, and I will talk about that in just a moment. If you'd like to get in touch, you can find me on Instagram. I am at Wool Needles Hands on Instagram. You can also find me on Instagram at fiber.for.the.people, which is the Instagram account linked to my hand dyed yarn business, Fiber for the People Yarn, which can also be found at fiberforthepeopleyarn.com. We do have a shop update coming this Saturday, July 7th at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. Use the code WNHLOVE to receive 10% off of your purchase. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started with the podcast. Don't forget to grab your beverage, your knitting, your crochet, any project that you're working on, take a load off and hang out with me for a while. We have a knit along going on over here, a year long knit along for the Wool Needles Hands podcast. It is the Wool Needles Hands Year of Hats Knit Along 2018. You can find the hashtag for that right down here at the bottom of your screen. It is hashtag WNH Year of Hats KAL 2018. Use that hashtag anytime you post on social media with your photos so that people can find your work that's connected to that knit along and so that I can find it as well. We've just wrapped up the month of June and the month of June's theme was knitting a hat or crocheting a hat of your choice. Each month has a different theme and that was for June. It was knitters or crocheters choice and I'm super excited to share with you the finished objects, some of the finished objects that came from that thread over on the Ravelry group. announce the winner for the month of June. If you are interested in knowing what the prize is for the month of June, you can find that in episode 26 of the podcast, or I'll pop it up right over here. You can kind of see a little bit about the prize that is coming to the winner of the June portion of the knit along. And then in a moment, I will announce what the prize will be for the July portion of the knit along. And we'll chat a little bit about what that portion of the cal entails. All right, without further ado, the winner, which was chosen by random number generator, is Sarah, who is Sarah W-A-K on Ravelry. She knit the True North Toque, which you can see here, which is by Made by Marley. It's a beautiful, very rustic design. I love this so much. It's gonna be such a beautiful wintertime hat with that pretty pom-pom. I love it. So Sarah, congratulations. Please get in touch with me either down below in the comment section, or you can email me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. So congratulations. Sarah. All right, let's talk about July. July is the month where you get to stretch your design skills. The whole purpose of this month is to design a hat yourself. Come up with an original design. Um, it doesn't have to be intricate. It doesn't have to be super fancy. It doesn't have to be completely um, one of a kind, something that we've never seen before. It's really hard um, with so many designs out there to design something that really is, you know, never been seen, completely original in all of its aspects. That's, that's really hard. So all you have to 
do is just create this hat without a pattern. Pretty much the pattern comes from your mind, your own creativity. And you can share that if you would like. Um, you can share your design on Ravelry. You can even make this a for purchase pattern that you use later, have it test knit, do the whole shebang. It's completely up to you, but it does not have to be something you publish. It just has to be something that you come up with on your own. This can be quite a challenge. I completely understand that. And if you would like to opt out of this month because it's just not in your time frame right now, no sweat, completely understand, completely, completely. So it's really up to you. If you'd like to take on the challenge, you don't have a whole lot of other things going on right now, then this is perfect for you. But if it's just not in, like I said, your time frame, no sweat at all, I promise. I have a really special prize for the July portion of the knit along. This is by Spool Stories, who is Marilitza. She is the maker behind Spool Stories. She creates project bags and they are beautiful. She has a really beautiful eye for fabrics. And in this case, it's definitely no exception. I love this. This is actually a needle case. So here is the needle case. This is by uh, Marilitza, at, who is Spool Stories. And you can see that she used this really cool cork fabric down here, which is nice for adding structure. And you can, if you open it, there's her little label right there. It has all the separate little compartments for needles. Now I'm gonna say this is for double pointed needles and maybe a pouch for some circular needles right here. I have a straight needle here to kind of show you that that would be um, too tall. You wouldn't be able to close the pouch, but double pointed needles, which I have one right here, whoop, actually fit beautifully in here. And now not only are you going to receive this needle pouch, which is so cool. I'm loving this like bandana fabric almost. It's kind of has like a denim look. It's not denim, um, but it's a really nice sturdy fabric. Um, and then of course this cork fabric and the magnetic closure right there. Um, but you're going to also receive in addition to this, a little needle cozy. So this is a DPN cozy. It's almost like if you're working on a pair of socks, you can um, stick your DPNs in here and then your sock project comes out here. I love it so much. So both the DPN cozy and the needle case will be the prize for the July portion of the year of hats uh, knit along. And I'm really excited to share this with you guys. Marilitza, if you're watching, this is really beautiful. I love this. I think this envelope style of needle case is perfect because this can be slipped down into a project bag if you have a project where you're working on multiple needle sizes um, you know what have you or even circular needles because it does have this front pouch here which would be good for a set of circular needles you could also make this just something that you put your tools in you know you, the world is your oyster but this is nice because it is slim it can fit into a project bag really love it. So Marilitza, thank you so much for your donation to the podcast. I'm super excited to give this away for the month of July. So those of you that are inspired to design your own hats, jump on board for the month of July. This could be your prize. Super excited to give this away and super excited to share some of these designs as they come along. The threads are up on Ravelry right now, the chatter thread and the finished object thread. So you can head over there and get started. Okay, so I am drinking, it probably looks really, I'm not sure if this looks appetizing to you or not. Um, it's actually tea with a little bit of mango puree and it's delicious and there's some blueberries at the bottom. So this, and I have my little tea bag. Oh. So I wanted to shake it up a little bit instead of just brewing some tea. I was at Walmart the other day um, getting some diapers, you know, things that you need around the house that you go to Walmart for. And I noticed in their freezer section that they sell by Goya. It's um, Goya makes a lot of uh, like mango juice in a can. Um, you can get like passion fruit juice. They have a lot of uh, Mexican kind of ingredients that you would use in Mexican recipes, but they also have a mango puree. It's actually 100% mango pulp and it comes in this rectangular, you know, uh, vacuum sealed frozen brick almost. Um, if I have a picture, I'll pop it up here so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. But pretty much what it is, is frozen mango pulp. There's nothing else, no added sugar, no added anything other than just the flesh of a mango that's been pureed. So I picked up a couple of those. Oh. oh my lord, how many sneezes? It's right there. Okay, back to business. And I was at Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, which is kind of like a, a coffee shop chain similar to Starbucks, and they had a peach mango iced tea. 
I'm not sure. They call it cold brew tea, which I think is hilarious. There's, there's no such thing as cold brew tea. It's called iced tea. Brew the tea when it's hot, and then you pour it over ice and it becomes iced tea. I really don't think you can cold brew tea. Probably wrong about that. So if you would like to insist upon how you can cold brew tea down in the comment section, feel free. Um, but I've never heard of that before. It's this new thing, apparently. Cold brew coffee, cold brew tea. Completely off topic. What I'm trying to tell you is that they had a, an iced tea beverage and in the iced tea beverage as a form of sweetener, uh, it had like a peach mango puree, um, and that which was sweetened. Now this, the mango puree that I'm talking about here is unsweetened sweetened, which is good. I don't really want it to be uh, sweetened. But I decided what I was going to do was I was going to brew some tea, hot, and uh, let it sit out to cool. And the tea that I chose to brew is this tea here. It's white tea, blueberry, and acai, and it's by Cup of Life. I really, really love this tea brand. I use this in my packages when I ship out yarn for Fiber for the People. This is one of them that's actually coming out in some more recent purchases. Love it. And this particular flavor is really, really very good. So in this, I will, I'll brew this. I'll um, add blueberries so that the heat from the hot water will kind of break the blueberries down a little bit and uh, it lends the blueberry, a little bit more blueberry flavor to the tea. I let it sit, let it kind of come down a little bit in temperature, and then I add some of that mango puree to the tea just to give it, um, give it a little bit of uh, like rich fruit flavor and to sweeten it down just a little bit and then I add a bunch of ice. Um, I brew it extra strong so that when I do add the ice and they, it inevitably will melt a little bit and water it down it's not um, reducing the flavor too much. And you guys it's really very refreshing. It's not overly sweet, uh, it's not overly strong in flavor. It's really very just very mild and you can see hold this up you can probably see the mango you can see the blueberries there are kind of breaking down um, but it's got some extra nutrients in there some fiber and I like it so yeah you can give it a shot it's um, Goya mango puree you can get it at Walmart I only I know that for sure I'm sure there's other places that you can get it um, but it's good to add it to your iced tea or really to any um, mildly flavored beverage I think it would be good and then of course smoothies I mean your possibilities are endless not really I'm sure they end somewhere so something new George Barrett Jones, who is a Dutch design student, decided to use his kind of experience waiting for a train at a very, very cold train station to inspire a pretty incredible design. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about this because I'm going to let the photos speak for themselves because they are pretty interesting. But pretty much what this is, is a stationary bike, kind of similar to a workout bike, that can knit a scarf in five minutes, tops. I think I've shared something similar to this on the podcast in the past. I'm not exactly sure which episode it was, but people, other people, I think it was actually a rocking chair where you can sit in the rocking chair and the motion of the rocking chair can knit a pair of socks or a hat something similar to that. But in this case, it's a stationary bike. Now he mentions, and I'm paraphrasing here, that why not use that time that you're spending cold at a train station doing something that can warm your body, like pedaling a stationary bike, while creating something that can continue to warm your body once you get off the stationary bike. You can either keep it for yourself or you can give it away, but it's free, only costing the power of your own body. Now here are some photos that I'm gonna share with you of his process and some of his design sketches as well. Photo credits can be seen on the photo themselves and down below in the description box. Take a look. story was recommended to me by a viewer. If you find anything nitty, crafty, fibery related in the news and you'd like to share it with me here on the podcast so that I can share it with other viewers, please email me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com. Let me know if you would like me to share your name. Otherwise, I will keep you anonymous uh, just for your own privacy, I guess you could say. But I do appreciate that support in helping me come up with new content for the show. <laughs> you
All right, guys, so my work's in progress. I am working currently on two projects, and so you are going to see the same two projects here that you saw in the last episode of the podcast. Now, I'm gonna say something here really quick because I have noticed on a couple episodes of podcasts that I've been watching recently, there's a lot of talk about um, some podcasters, you can tell are no, their mojo is missing, uh, their knitting mojo, their crochet, their crafting mojo in general. <clears throat> They're having a hard time getting progress or making progress on some of their projects. And uh, they make um, comments about that in their podcast. And you can tell there's a lot of pressure um, to get those things done because we want to have new things to show here on the podcast. And I kind of want to take a minute and say no. Um, no to feeling that pressure, no to always having to have new projects on the needles for, you know, every episode of the podcast or every so many episodes of the podcast, like just no, because that's not, um, that's not realistic for me, at least, uh, being a mother of two of one of those little babies being only three months old and also, um, running my own business from my home like that's that's not feasible for me so i can definitely tell you that uh if you're looking for a podcast where the knitting podcaster um is rifling through projects and getting something new on the needles for every episode or even completing new projects really quickly like this isn't this isn't going to be one of those podcasts because number one i'm not one of that i'm not that kind of knitter at all. I don't consider myself a prolific knitter. I'm not a knitwear designer. Um, so I don't knit for a living. I knit for pleasure. I knit because whatever it is that I'm knitting is something that I enjoy knitting, that it is something that I would like to have for myself. It fits in my environment. It would be something that I could feasibly wear, uh, in, in the climate where I, where I live, you know, and, um, when you live in a desert, you know, in like where I live here in the Mojave desert, you know, you're not going to knit a lot of fair isle sweaters or, you know, real thick, garments. That's not something that's going to be on my needles often, um, maybe from time to time, but definitely the things that I knit, the things that I work on my projects will reflect, um, my kind of desire for the item or for the process and not necessarily just be something to knit because it's popular or because I want to show new things on the podcast all the time. This is a journey. Um, this is a kind of a video documentation of my journey of my process and that's, and I'm not going to make my process something that it isn't. So please know that if I share with you projects that you've seen before, that's because I'm a real person <laughs> with, you know, a real life and I have things going on and I work very hard to make the most of all of those things. And sometimes my uh, progress isn't as fast as, as it can be at other times. And so that's just, I'm just throwing that out there just because I think it needs to be said. I think it deserves the time to be shared, especially in this knitting podcast community, because there is a pressure. There's definitely a pressure to get things on the needles, to get things off the needles so that new things can be on the needles. And I think that causes, and it has with me in the past, um, it causes us to just get things on the needles whether we've finished anything. That's kind of just being um, a little bit hasty with our cast-ons, I guess you could say. And I'm really trying to curb that. Um, I'm really trying to be realistic about what I'm able to do in an, a certain amount of time. And right now, the two projects that I'm going to share with you, I have enjoyed working on these. I've enjoyed knowing that these are the two things I'm working on at the moment and not feeling a weight or a heaviness to uh, get other things out, you know, from from the sidelines and work on those. Uh, so I, I like how I'm doing it. I like I like the way that I'm kind of working on these things right now. So just throwing that out there. But let's go ahead and, you know, get to the meat of things, shall we? Okay, so we recently took a trip with the family to um, Utah. We actually went to this area of Utah called Navajo Lake. It's up by Cedar Breaks, which is another really beautiful place in Utah. Um, and it was gorgeous. It was so nice to take a little break from reality for a couple of days and take a trip with the family. And we went not only with my little family here, but with my parents, with my brother and my sister-in-law and their niece, Lou, who she and Angus just get along amazingly. And it was so much fun. So many fun memories made. We went fishing. Um, I went paddle boarding for the first time, which I thought was awesome. We stayed in these really cool, rustic, really rustic uh, cabins. And it was much needed. Really a lot of fun. And the road trip up there, I got a lot of work done on my squash blossom hat. And the road trip back, I got a lot of work done on my granny stripe uh, baby blanket that I'm making for my sister-in-law who was on this trip with us because she's expecting a baby in November. So I'm going to go ahead and share that blanket with you first. Um, and then I will talk about the squash blossom hat. But I'm really excited to share what I have going on with this baby blanket because it's just coming along so 
beautifully. This is a crochet project. This is um, just a granny stripe blanket. So if you've seen granny stripe blankets being made, um, there's a reason why so many people are working on them, you guys. Uh, it's very pleasurable, super relaxing. The, I always say this, but I really, really mean this. The color therapy it provides is everything, you guys. It really is. It makes this whole thing worth it. You could definitely make a beautiful granny stripe blanket with two colors and have a really beautiful stripe motif and it would still be super enjoyable. But I love the random distribution of colors in this project. It really just... Ugh. It's amazing. So let's go ahead and see my progress on my granny stripe blanket. Okay, so I'm gonna try and hold this up the best way that I can so you can see. Okay, so this is side to side. So this would be the length, what I have so far. Oh, I love it so much. And okay, so because I'm uh, crocheting this from minis that I have, just scraps, of yarn. That's why you're seeing an uneven distribution of uh, colors here, which I actually really love. I was a little concerned about it when this mauve color came along because I'm like, oh my gosh, it's going to leave such a thick portion because it was a pretty big mini. But then after I finished it and kind of saw how the uneven distribution of colors was working up, I thought it looked really cool. Um, it definitely lends itself to the whole scrappy vibe of the project because that's what this is. It's a scrappy project ultimately and I love it. So here's a breakdown of what the colors are and I'm going to make this a little bit more narrow so I can hold it a little easier. Um, and also just to show you the progress that was made, I think the last time we chatted, I was just starting this portion right here, which is cactus flower. That's one of my colorways uh, for fiber for the people yarn. I was just starting this. And since we've spoken, I have completed um, all of this. So not bad if I do say so myself. So here we go. We have silver slipper. Now these are all fiber for the people yarn. I wanted all of the yarn that was used in this baby blanket to be um, from my own hand dyed yarn. That would be part of the special nature of this gift. So every color that you're seeing here is a fiber for the people colorway. So we have silver slipper, come here often, my kind of pink, Craig Nadoon, one can become too familiar with vegetables, cactus flower, moving on up, peachy keen, this dark navy is moonlighting. Oh, it's so beautiful, you guys. This is lemon and grenadine here, and this is another cactus flower. This is on my 80-20 two-ply fingering weight yarn called Taylor's Favorite, and then this is on my 70-30 superwash merino silk called Twisty Singles Luxe. It's a single-ply fingering weight yarn. And then I have here, oh my goodness, this was one, um, this was a lucky strike. And honestly, I can't remember what the name of this lucky strike was. I just threw it in there because it was so pretty. So this, I'm going to turn it this way so you can see more of it. So this is actually kind of um, got a little bit of a purple tinge to it. It looks brown with a little bit of a purple tinge. And I don't know the name of that. I can't remember what it was, but it's beautiful. And then this was also a lucky strike colorway, um, this beautiful green kind of like a pine green, and yeah, I can't remember either of these, so I'm gonna have to go back and look at my listings to figure out what those were called, but I can't remember those particular colorways, but all together, you guys, it's just so lovely. I'm really loving the distribution of the colors, I'm loving the unevenness of that, um, and just the colors, you know, in general, just the way that they all work together, I think it's, it's a lot of fun. The stitches have such a beautiful texture to them. If you're not a crocheter, or you don't crochet, I'm not sure how you would word that. Um, this is actually a really great place to start learning because that texture running through your hands is so pleasant. Um, and also because you get a lot of really great texture with a pretty easy stitch pattern. Um, so this, this is a triple crochet. Now, one thing I will tell you, I'm not a veteran crocheter by any means. I'm, this is I'm very new to this. Um, so I don't think I use the terminology correctly, so you can correct me if I'm wrong down below. Um, but I will say that the rhythm of this stitch design and uh, the ease, those two things together, plus the beautiful texture that you get from the finished project and also how the color comes across with those stitches makes this such a fun project to work on. So I highly recommend it. If you're interested in getting into crochet, this is a really great place to start. Uh, for you because it is easy, but it does present a little bit of a challenge So it keeps you interested, but it's easy and it will be something that you can pull out and work on um, Whenever you feel like just having something easy to kind of 
calm you, provide you with, you know, like I said, color therapy, some rhythm. It's a lot of fun. This is my magic cake and my, I'm still working on this kind of pine green portion here at the top. And here's my magic cake. This is what I'm, and I add to my cake as I go. So once this gets to the very end, I'll um, do a little magic knot and tie on more colors and just kind of add to it as I go. This, I'm really interested to see what this color looks like. It's gonna be really punchy um, compared to all the other colors, but I think it'll be fun. So lots of cool colors coming. Can't wait to get more progress going on this. It's just flying, it really is. And um, she's due in November and this is gonna be done well before then. Um, I love it. Hey, my squash blossom hat. Now I went on and on and a lot of the on and on that I, I went, uh, you didn't see in the last episode because I chopped it up in the editing process. It just drove me crazy. But I did go on and on about how I just can't find time to knit lace. It's just too hard, blah, 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 blah. Woe is me, what have you. And sure, like lace knitting, it's hard to find time to do that, but it's not impossible. And I really wanted to get this done. And this was not, this was not like a situation where I forced myself to work on a project for the sake of the podcast. It wasn't anything like that. It was just, I really wanted to work on this hat for myself because I want this hat to be finished when the weather starts to cool down. I just needed a kick in the pants, I guess, to get it done. And, you know, considering the only other project I was really actively working on the time was my granny stripe blanket. There's no excuse not to have something else going on because trust me, that's a very easy project to work on. You can find yourself, you know, abandoning other projects just because of how easy that is. So I just needed a little bit of a kick in the pants. And I appreciate um, a couple of you who commented down below about, um, you know, consider this a kick in the pants from one of your viewers uh, in a very nice way. There's no negative comments down below. So I appreciate that, but thank you. Keep me honest within reason um, when you can tell that I really wanna get something finished. Does that make sense? I don't know. Anyway, I have made quite a bit of progress. It's not finished. I think I said something on the last episode of the podcast about how I was gonna have it finished. I'm gonna stop making these like, uh, what do they call it? Pie crust promises. Like I think Mary Poppins says that. Easily made, easily broken. I've said that before on the podcast. I'm dealing with a knot right now. Guys, I can't continue. I have to wait until this is all figured out. What is this? This is called a mohair nightmare. Look at this. What is this? Okay, just give me a minute while I sort out my life. You have to be really careful. It was stuck in the zipper. You have to be careful when that happens when you're dealing with like a mohair fiber because that shiz breaks easily. Okay, I think we're back on true, maybe not, hold on. Come on. Okay, yep, 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 here we go. And we're back. Okay, so my squash blossom hat, I threw this on to some 40 inch circulars. It was on circulars before, but it was a 16 inch circular and I um, I wanted it to be on something a little bit longer so that I could actually stretch it out and, and see the pattern. Because it is a lace pattern, you kind of want to stretch it, you know, to see how it's uh, coming along. So here we go. I don't know if you remember how much progress I had on it uh, the last time you saw me, but there is a considerable amount of progress made here. So here is what I have for my squash blossom hat. And you guys, I am really happy. Now this is a really great example of where you do need to feel a little bit of pressure to kind of get a move on with something because you know you're really gonna love it once you do. It's almost like when you, you're gonna go swimming if you're like anything like me. The pool's always gonna seem a little cold at first and unless you just jump in, you know, off the diving board head first into the water and, and just get it over with, you're gonna be creeping into the water. It's gonna take you forever. You're gonna spend a million minutes just waiting for that small little portion of your body that seems to be completely, you know, incapable of dealing with temperature change to become acclimated. The whole thing, it's just like that. And that's kind of what this was for me. It's like I was working on it, a little bit here, a little bit there, making excuses, and I just needed to jump in, which I did, and I'm really happy that I did. Okay, this is like the longest episode with just me telling you stuff. Okay, so there is my squash blossom hat and it's beautiful. I really love it. The, the lace pattern is gorgeous. I love the way it comes across with this yarn. You can tell that this yarn is not completely solid. There are some places with more faded color um, and I kind of like the way that that works with the pattern. It kind of gives it a nice like vintagey faded feel. And then of course the halo from the mystery fiber as I'm calling it because I can't really remember what 
that was. It didn't have a label on it. It was just in my stash. The um, rust color that you're seeing here, or I guess you could call it the terracotta color. This is fiber for the people yarn. This was a lucky strike colorway. Um, it's beautiful. It was called clay. Uh, Lucky Strikes are one-of-a-kind colorways. Um, you can find out more about how I create Lucky Strikes by heading over to the shop and going to the blog tab. There's only one blog post right now, and it's about how I create my Lucky Strike colorways. But this, um, this was a uh, Lucky Strike colorway. So it's called Clay, and it really looks beautiful with this. I guess I always kind of feel like this about lace patterns once you get started. As soon as you start a, a new lace pattern, there's always that period of time where you're kind of trying to get to the point where you can remember the pattern. Not necessarily memorize it, I think that that's really hard to do, but you understand kind of the nature of the pattern so it's easy to work it without having to be a slave to the actual physical pattern in front of you. It didn't take that long for me to get to that point with this, but I was working on this on the drive up to Utah and so I felt like it took me a little bit longer to kind of get to that point. But once I did, it really started to fly off the needles. I mean, just look at this. Look at this. Oh, let's see. Isn't that stunning? Absolutely stunning. This is a pattern by Irina Anakiva. Um, and I'll link to it down below in the description box. But it's just beautiful. I can imagine this being like absolutely amazing with, you know, a really good four-ply fingering weight yarn. Um, maybe a yarn a little bit uh, thicker than the one that I'm using. It would really give, lend really beautiful stitch definition to this pattern. I, I do feel like the stitch definition here is not as great because I'm using a single ply yarn. And whenever you use a single ply yarn, you're going to get a little bit less stitch definition than you would with a two ply or a three ply or a four ply. The more plies you add to a, a strand of yarn, the more round, the more plump. Uh, that yarn is going to be. The fewer plies, the more flat that yarn is going to be, which will inevitably always have a little bit less stitch definition than your plumper, uh, more round yarns. And so that's kind of one thing that's going on with this, but it's okay. It doesn't take away from it at all. I mean, you can definitely make out the lace pattern. It's beautiful. Um, but yeah, you know, keep that in mind when it comes to, and I'm going to have, I'm going to upload a tips from the dyeing studio on kind of a background on plies and how plies work in yarn. But keep that in mind because the more plies in a skein of yarn, the rounder the yarn, the more stitch definition that you're going to have. Now, I swear by a two ply twist yarn. I love two ply. I feel like the stitch definition with the two ply yarn is beautiful um, because of the two ply construction of the yarn, but um, it is not as round of a yarn as a four ply. So you probably get even crisper stitch definition. Actually, I know that you get even crisper stitch definition with a four, four ply yarn because it's more round. So it's just something to keep in mind. So for example, um, this yarn that I have right here, um, this is a two ply, oops, let's get it to pull it together. Okay, so this is a two ply. There's gold stellina in there, but the construction of the yarn is two ply. It's rounder than a single ply, but only by one ply. So it's not your roundest, which sounds kind of crazy. It's not your most round yarn that you can get. The more plies, the more round the yarn, the better stitch definition. Just keep that in mind. That's your takeaway from this. <laughs> so ultimately, I'm really happy that I gave myself, I delivered myself a firm kick in the pants to get moving on this. And it's going to be gorgeous. I will have this finished by the next time you see me for sure. And I'll probably have it on my head, which will be really hot and uncomfortable, but I'll do it for you guys, at least for a short period of time, like two minutes. That is my squash blossom hat. Super excited about this. If you're looking for a really pretty lace hat, um, something relatively easy, something a little bit different, go for it. Squash blossom hat by Irina Anakiva. One of my favorite parts of this design is this twisted rib brim because it looks fancy, kind of like brioche, which is a craft that... I don't know if I'm going to get into because who wears a brioche sweater in the Mojave Desert? Not me. At least I don't think I do. We'll talk about that later. So I'm adding a segment to the podcast and I'm not sure how far I'm going to take this segment if it's going to be something that comes back. Um, it probably won't be in every episode. I can guarantee you it's not going to be in every episode, but I think about this segment. Um, 
every once in a while while I'm browsing Pinterest because sometimes, and I'm not a, I'm not a big Pinterest uh, user. I love Pinterest. It's a great resource, um, but I'm not a slave to Pinterest, I guess. I'm not on it all the time but sometimes I am on it and I start seeing things that pop across my Pinterest feed that I think I would love to share this on the podcast. I want to share this with my viewers. This is amazing. Oh my goodness. Look at this. So I'm going to create a segment called Pinterest got me. And it's just where I share with you a couple of things that I've recently seen on Pinterest that I think you might be into and you can decide to check it out if you'd like to, or you can just uh, not check it out. It's completely up to you, but it will at least satisfy that urge that I have. Uh, to share things that I see on Pinterest with you folks. Okay, so something that I've noticed on Pinterest lately, and actually it's not something I've noticed on Pinterest lately, it's just because Pinterest is smart and they know how to adjust my feed um, based on things that I've seen and pinned in the past. So I'm getting lots of uh, crochet projects coming through my Pinterest feed because now that I'm crocheting a little bit, I'm taking a big interest in crochet patterns and so they keep sending things through uh, my Pinterest feed. And one of the things I've recently seen on Pinterest, but I actually saw in real life just recently at this adorable shop in Cedar City, Utah, was a granny square garland. So my sister-in-law was with me at this gorgeous little shop in Utah and we noticed because they have this little section devoted to baby things, um, like nursery you know, gifts, I guess you could say, and one of them was this granny square garland absolutely gorgeous really pretty and she mentioned that she thinks something like that would be really cute in her nursery because like I mentioned she's expecting uh, in November and so I told her I probably made a little bit of a pie crust promise but not really she's my sister-in-law and I would definitely do this for her plus I would like to learn how to crochet granny squares that I could make something like that and so it got me to thinking and um, Lo and behold, it pops up on my Pinterest feed and I hadn't even looked it up on Pinterest. It's just Pinterest can read my mind apparently. So I started getting little crocheted, uh, little crocheted knickknacks that you would put around the house and one of them happened to be a crocheted garland. It wasn't a granny square, it was like a triangular flag garland. Thought that was adorable, clicked on that, went down the whole rabbit hole of crochet and knit garlands and I thought they were great. So I'm gonna share with you a few things that I've seen on Pinterest that I like, and then I have a proposition for you guys. So first, go ahead and check out some of the things that I have seen on Pinterest that are adorable. Okay, so here's my proposition. I need to crochet a granny square garland for my sister-in-law uh, for her baby shower, which is going to be, I think, in October. But I would also love to, and I've thought about this in the past, to create some Christmas decorations um, that are knit or crocheted. Uh, and that's, that's kind of just something that's been on my crafting to-do list. So I have a question, a proposition for you guys. Because the Year of Hats is the only knit-along going on over here at the Wool Needles Hands podcast, how do you guys feel about doing a crochet slash knitting garland knit slash crochet along? Now, I'm not exactly sure how this would work yet, but I'm just throwing it out there to you guys. You can let me know what you think. But all it would be is that we would have from the point of the start of the knit along, which I'm thinking I would probably launch um, beginning of September, we would have from that point all the way to January 1st to crochet or knit garlands. And they can be used for Christmas, for Thanksgiving, for Halloween, for any other holiday. It does not have to be just for Christmas. They can be used for anything, but they just need to be used as decor in your home. In, in, in a what that means is that if you're going to submit this to the finished object thread, I'd love to see it submitted being used as decor in your home in some way, whether it's a Christmas or holiday decoration, or it's just something that you're putting up in your house as decoration. That's what's going to be your submission to the finished object thread. At least that's what I'm thinking. But really, there are no logistics for this particular um, crochet or knit along yet because that's, I'm just throwing it out there to you guys. So is this something that you'd be interested in? Do you guys want to crochet or knit some garlands with me? Because I'm already going to be knitting one or crocheting one for my sister-in-law. I may like to do a few for my own house because I have a couple of ideas of where I could put some cute ones that are just, you know, general decor. And then I definitely want to do something for the Christmas tree this season. Um, I really, I had some knit Christmas ornaments on our Christmas tree last year, but I really wanted to go bigger this year and I wanted it to be something easy. That's why I'm, I'm probably going to go the crochet route because I think you can get something done a little quicker. Um, so that's what I'm thinking. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think. Mm -hmm. 
So I have a local yarn shop to share with you guys. This was submitted to the show by Stacy, who is Griffinitress on Instagram and plays with sticks on Ravelry. This is from Clarkston, Michigan. It is called The Knitter's Nest. This shop is owned by Levin Shook and Muriel Shellswell and was opened in November of 2017. Their motto is inspire, create, repeat. And one of the cool things that they do is every Thursday night, they host a sip and stitch session, which is kind of just like a knitting group that gets together. This group caters to a wide range of ages and they all come together and share their love of knitting. And what's really cool is that their youngest member of this group is five years old. Stacy says that they are so welcoming and friendly and that's one of my favorite things about local yarn shops is how welcoming and friendly that the clientele and the owners and the people that work there can be and that's what makes it so worth it to go visit these places in your community. Stacy, thank you so much for sharing the Knitter's Nest and also if you are interested in sharing your local yarn shop here on the podcast please don't hesitate email me at woolneedleshands at gmail.com you can put together some photos some video of your shop and I will share it here on the podcast. Also, if you choose to remain anonymous, that's fine. But if you would like me to share either your Instagram handle or your Ravelry name, you can send that to me as well. So without further ado, here is a look at the Knitter's Nest in Clarkston, Michigan. guys it is time for me to go I have a lot of work to do today in the dyeing studio prepping yarn for Saturday's shop update but it has been so nice taking a moment to sit here and chat with you guys until next time on episode 28 of the podcast in two weeks time happy knitting happy whatever it is that you're doing have a great rest of your week and weekend and actually because today is 4th of July happy 4th of July even though it's probably not going to be 4th of July when you see this but happy Independence Day if you are here in the United States Thank you so much time and time again for coming back to check out the podcast. Can't wait to see you next time. <laughs>